Hello and welcome to our worship service here at Christ Lutheran Church. If you are watching, we are glad that you are joining us in this way. Also, please know that uh, Christ and Calvary, of which I'm serving as vacancy, are back to in-person services. It's by reservation, by phone or email, uh, to reserve your place. We are thankful for the opportunity to gather together, uh, to be in the Lord's house, but we're also thankful for technology and the opportunity for you to join us in this way and to still hear God's word and to sing along at home with the hymns, the liturgy, all praising God and reminding us of his goodness. Uh, the, the phrase we're going to really hear a lot during the service, during the sermon, is do not fear, only believe. Jesus spoke those words to Jairus, whose daughter was at the point of death, and then we learn was even at death, and then the Lord awakened her back to life. But as he said to Jairus, he also says to us, and let's face it, in this world, there was a lot of things that can cause fear, anxiety, stress, worry, and the Lord wants us to know that in faith, uh, he will... He doesn't promise that if you just believe enough, he'll just take all the bad stuff away. We live in a fallen world. But what he does promise is that he will be with us, he will strengthen us, he will steer us through, and that he does have perfection waiting for us in paradise with him. And so in the midst of whatever stage, whatever uh, set of aspects that are going on in your life, know that you do not have to live in fear. But in the midst of fear and stress and worry and anxiety, believe, trust, and know that you are in the Lord's care and his love in his absolute perfect plan for you. And whatever his will is in this life, but we know what it is in the life to come, and that is eternity with him. And so we'll be reminded of what the Lord has done in the past, and we're reminded of this hymn, O God, our help in ages past.
Room 3 if you have your hymnals at home, or the order of service is pinned in the comments below. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who Amen. made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue singing the Kyrie and the Glory in Excelsis. Love of the Lord never ceases. 
His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 9 and 13 through 15. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, he so should he complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We sing the Alleluia in verse. Turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? 
And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Lord. Christ. Our hymn of the day is 755 in the very midst of life. The text was written by Martin Luther, someone who knew much about what it would be to fear circumstances around him, what it was to suffer loss, and yet clinging to the might, the grace, the mercy, and the majesty of God.
Amen. So our sermon today is entitled, Fear Versus Belief. Jairus, a leader in the synagogue, in desperation comes to Jesus. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. A woman cursed with the flow of blood for 12 years in desperation comes to Jesus. If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. A woman whose mother is dying of cancer drops to her knees in desperation and comes to Jesus. You can make my mother well, Lord. A man whose wife has been overtaken by dementia lies on his bed at night and in desperation comes to Jesus in prayer. Keep her safe, Lord. Deliver her from this evil. A child just old enough to understand what it means that grandma has to go live in a nursing home in desperation kneels beside his bed at night and prays, Please take care of Grandma, Jesus. Whether from the towns around the Sea of Galilee or from this church or from the homes of your families, the prayers of the desperate rise up to Jesus. Save my daughter. Heal my sickness. Save my mother. Help my father. Deliver my wife. Keep Grandma safe. One after another without ceasing. The prayers of those who can no longer do anything else, those prayers rise up to Jesus like the smoke of the incense in the temple of God. In the Bible, Jesus often answers those kinds of prayers in an instant just like that. Right when he hears them, he, he raises the dead, he heals the sick, he relieves the suffering of everyone involved. He heals Jairus' daughter. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And the little girl gets up. He heals the bleeding woman. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And she was healed. Jesus promises us the very same answer to our prayers. When someone you love is dying, either suddenly, or because of illness, or because of having lived a long life, Jesus promises to say to them, get up, I say to you, rise. When one of your loved ones is losing their memory, or can no longer take care of themselves, Jesus promises to say to them, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. When you yourself get to the point where there's nothing left for you to do but to pray in desperation, Jesus promises that he will do for you what you saw him do in the gospel today. He will heal your diseases. He will put a stop to your afflictions. He will raise you up from the dead. Now in the Bible that happened often immediately, just like that. But for us that might not be the case. Jesus certainly could heal us right now and may very well do that. But truly the miracles in our gospel today are not about now. These miracles are a sign of what life will be like in the age to come when there are new heavens and new earth when this fallen world has passed away. Jesus' miracles of resurrection and healing are pictures of what we will all experience when Jesus descends from heaven and shouts with a shout and, and raises the dead as he ushers in the new creation, when he welcomes us all into the life of the world to come. What we see happen in the gospel today will happen to us. It will happen to all who believe in Christ as their Lord and Savior, as the worker of miracles for them. 
We will all be healed. We will all be raised from the dead. And when Jesus does that for us, we will all rejoice in the presence of Christ and of God the Father Almighty. And in the meantime, while we wait in faith for that great day, Jesus tells us what he told the ruler of the synagogue that day while he waited for his daughter to be healed. Do not fear, only believe. Do not fear, only believe that the mercies of the Lord are new for you every morning and that his compassion never fails. Do not fear. Believe that the Lord is good and that while you wait for him and for the fulfillment of his promises, he will continue to care for you. Do not fear. Believe that while you sit in silence, while you bear suffering, the Lord is on his way and he will not cast you off forever. Believe that the Lord will show you compassion according to the multitude, the abundance of his mercies. Believe that Christ doesn't afflict you willingly, nor does he grieve the children of men. And so do not fear, only believe. But that's the hard part, isn't it? Believing that God is doing all these things for us in Christ while our eyes look around us and we see what's going on. While we're experiencing sickness and suffering and pain and death all around us. It's hard not to fear and only believe when our parents or our friends, our neighbors even sometimes our children die and leave us alone. It's hard not to fear when our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through horrible illnesses and injuries and we don't understand why. It's hard not to fear and only believe when our neighbors get sick and have to move to a nursing home. It's hard not to fear and only believe when we lose our health, our memory, our ability to take care of ourselves over and over again. We see it day in and day out. There's suffering going on all around us and or within us. And sometimes it seems that there is no end to it. And so it's hard to believe Jesus and what he will do for us, like he did in the gospel. But do you think it was easy for Jairus to believe in Jesus when he came to him and begged him to heal his little girl? Because it wasn't. Do you think it was easy for that woman who bled all day and night for 12 straight years, labeled as unclean in society, to wade through the crowd and come to Jesus? Because it wasn't. Do you think it was easy for the disciples and the apostles who followed Jesus during his earthly ministry? Because it wasn't. The people that they loved got sick just like now. The people closest to them suffered for reasons they didn't understand, just like now. Their parents and friends and neighbors and perhaps even their children died and left them brokenhearted, just like now. It wasn't easy for them to put away their fear. It wasn't easy for them to believe because it was no different for them then than it is for us now. And still Jesus breaks through all that we can see and feel and hear and says to us, do not fear, only believe. Do not fear injury. Do not fear sickness or illness. Do not fear death. Do not fear, only believe. Believe that Jesus will heal you of all your pains and every sickness 
Believe that Jesus will deliver you from sin and from anything that the devil or your sinful flesh inflicts upon your soul. Believe that Jesus will drive away every dreaded disease when he returns. Just like he drove out demons from those who were possessed. Just like he promised to do. He shows us today what our eternal life will be like when he comes again in glory. And believe that even death, your death, will be no match for Jesus. And that when he comes again, he will raise you from the grave. Do not fear. Only believe. Now, yes, I know it's hard to believe. Actually, that's an understatement. It is impossible to believe of your own doing and of your own will. On your own, you would never believe anything you've heard from Jesus today, much less what I'm saying to you. And that's why God has given us the Holy Spirit to work belief in our hearts and our minds. As St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one can believe in Jesus' power to heal and to save and to deliver except through the Holy Spirit. By ourselves, we can't believe in anything Jesus promises. By ourselves, we can't follow Jesus one single step. By ourselves, we will not conquer our fears. But the Holy Spirit, gracious as he is, calls us by the gospel. Gives us that gift of belief in Jesus' promises, that he makes us holy in God's sight, and that he keeps and supports us in our belief. It is the Holy Spirit that drives away our fear and gives us the belief that Jesus demands. And that belief is a bold belief. Jairus didn't just come along and pray some wishy-washy, maybe you could do something for me, Lord, kind of prayer. He was bold in his spirit-given belief. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Bleeding woman was also bold in the prayer she let loose from her lips. If I just touch even his garment, I will be made well. That's the kind of belief Jesus is calling us to today. That's the kind of belief that the Holy Spirit gives. And so through this text, we are called to repent. Yes, repent. Repent of being wishy-washy and wavering in our prayers to the Lord. Because that's a sin. St. James says, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. So repent of not asking Jesus to give us what we truly need. And repent of our fear. St. Paul wrote to Timothy, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And so we repent of our timid belief, repent of our unspiritual fear. And when we are desperate like Jairus or like that bleeding woman, when there's nothing left for us to do but to pray, may we be bold. Do not fear, only believe. Believe that Jesus will give you whatever you ask, because he says in John 14, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Do not fear, only believe. Do what Paul told the jailer in Philippi, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Believe what Jeremiah tells us in Lamentations. Though he cause grief, he will have compassion. Believe what Jesus says to Jairus. Do not fear, only believe. And when
when Jesus does come again in glory, we will hear him say to us the very same thing that he told the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Our service continues by professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now in a time of prayer. After each prayer, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and invite you to respond Hear our prayer. Let us pray. In your mercy, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us and support us in challenging times. I pray, Lord, that you would make us steadfast, abounding in the work that the Lord gives us in our God-given vocations. May our faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew our lives and reflect your glory to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear I pray. Lord, I pray that you would take from us all hatred and prejudice that you would give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice in our nation and to all the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all people. Lord, in your mercy, Heal our sanctify our homes with your presence, bless them with your joy, Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, those going through sickness or adversity, be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and everything else that you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in all eternity, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord 
look upon you with his favor and grant you all peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, 738, Lord of all hopefulness. <laughs>